Hey guys, welcome back. Um, let me just start this video with a big thanks to all of my new members on my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I am doing a special promotion for the first 25 members of my channel, whereby all of you will be able to join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can also share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get a Early access to them so if that sounds of interest to you do have a look out for the join button thank you okay so on my second generation fire stick as we know we cannot freeze any applications we are severely limited because it's running fire os 5. now i've been doing some research for the last few days and trying to find out what exactly is running on the device and trust me when i say guys there is a lot of stuff in fact let me just show you i did an export of all of the running packages and system processes on that device and here we can just see guys um there is a lot of bloatware on that device i mean some of these you'll recognize from my 4k fire stick video uh things like these uh, device messaging uh we have um these input devices we have all of these kindle processes i mean why they're running on my second generation fire stick or really any of the fire sticks just lots of stuff guys running on our device and there's no way for us to actually freeze it and as we know the second generation fire stick even though it was really good for its time it really is starting to creak now so wouldn't it be great if we could remove all of the unnecessary bloatware and make these old legacy devices perform so much better well in this video today guys let me show you exactly how you can do that if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials the latest fire stick android and android tv tips and tricks then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell it's a small click from you but it makes a big difference to me thank you okay so i'm going to do my demonstration on the second generation fire tv stick now if you go over to your device and go to settings and then my fire tv and go into about here you can just confirm and we can see that, that my device is running fire os version 5.2.7.2 now i've also tested this process on the second generation fire tv the one that is still a beast even today and because that device is also running fire os 5 you can follow the exact same steps on that device okay so to start this process we only need to use one application and that one application is called remote adb shell now, as I've mentioned in a previous video or quite a few previous videos now, unfortunately on these older legacy devices, the ones that run Fire OS 5, unfortunately there's no way for you to make a remote ADB connection directly on the device itself. So for example, here we can see this is remote ADB shell. Let's start that up. Now I've confirmed that is the correct IP address for my device. And I've also double checked to make sure that ADB debugging is enabled. Let's now click on connect. And unfortunately, this is all you're going to see. And I did actually mention this in a previous, previous, previous video where I actually apologize because uh, for a long time, I've been doing all of my demonstrations on the 4K Fire Stick and lots of those demonstrations required you to make an ADB connection. And I kept saying in those videos, just start remote ADB shell, make a connection to yourself and away you go. But lots of you running these older devices just couldn't make that connection. And I kept just saying, restart your device, restart ADB. And I just couldn't understand why this thing is not working. But as we know now, because of Fire OS 5, it's just never going to work. We cannot make any ADB connections directly on the device itself. So again, guys, do let me apologize for that. But we do have a workaround, which is if you do want to enter in any ADB commands, you just have to do it from a remote device, a remote Android device. So, so it can be an Android cell phone or an Android tablet, um, or it can also be an Android emulator. So in my demonstration, I'm actually going to use the LD player, but you can also use BlueStacks or Nox or any emulator that you're comfortable with. As long as it runs Android, we can follow the steps. Okay, so the first thing to do is just confirm what your IP address is. And in my case, my IP address ends in 152. I've already made sure that I have ADB debugging enabled. I'm now going to start my Android emulator. And if you don't know how to install an Android emulator on your PC, I will leave a link in the video description on how you can do that. But again, guys, you can follow this process via your Android smartphone or your Android tablet. Now on the Android emulator, the first thing I'm going to do is just install a remote ADB shell. And the easiest way to do that is just go over to my website and let's just open up the browser. Click on tutorials and the latest tutorial in the list will be how you can debloat your Fire OS 5 devices. And if you don't see the latest tutorial, just refresh your page. Okay, let me open that up. And here is the tutorial. And it says that the only thing that we need is just remote ADB shell. So let me click on that. 
Let's scroll down and click on the green download button. Let's give that a second. That starts downloading. Let's click on that and click on install. So that's remote ADB show going onto our device. Let's now click on open. We can click on OK. And let's now enter in the IP address of our Fire TV device. So in my case, it was 192.168.0.152. And let's click on connect. Now, as soon as I click on connect, because this is going to be the first time that I'm going to be making this connection, we should see a prompt on our Fire TV. Or in my example, I'm doing it on the second generation Fire TV stick. So let's click on connect. Let's go over to my Fire TV and we can see nothing on the screen. Now, if you have this issue where nothing seems to come up on the screen, all we need to do is go over to settings, my Fire TV, go to developer options, turn this off, wait five seconds, let's turn that back on. Let's go back up to our Android emulator. Let's try that again. Click on connect, go back to our Fire Stick, and there's a prompt guys. So I do say it so many times, if you have any kind of issue with ADB, just turn ADB off for a couple of seconds, turn it back on, and that should fix most of your problems. Let's click on OK. Let's go back to our Android emulator. And there it is guys, we've now made an ADB connection onto my second generation Fire TV stick. Now some commands you can learn here guys, probably the first one you want to learn is just exactly what's running on your device. And the command for that is just PM list packages. So basically list all of the things running on my system. So let's press enter on that. And there we can just see it guys. So lots of stuff running on my second generation Fire TV stick, consuming lots of memory, lots of storage, and of course, valuable CPU cycles. Okay, so how do we know what we can disable? And these are the 30 processes that I've identified that we can uninstall. Now, one thing I noticed on Fire OS 5 is the command that we're going to use is actually an ADB uninstall command. So we're actually going to uninstall these applications or processes. Now, as we know with the 4K Fire Stick and newer devices, we don't have the permissions to do that. All we can do on those devices is just freeze those applications. So it definitely seems like on these older devices, we seem to have more permission than the newer devices. And these are the actual commands we're going to copy and paste into Remote ADB Shell, which will then be sent over to our Fire Stick and uninstall all of this Amazon bloatware. So, so let's highlight the first one. Let's get all of that. So it starts as PM uninstall minus K minus minus user zero. And then what we're going to uninstall. Let's highlight all of that. Select copy. Let's go back to Remote ADB Shell. And let's now paste that in. Let's press enter. Okay, let's come back with an internal error. Let's try the next one. Let's try this one here. And there we see it. We now get a success message telling us that this application has been uninstalled from our system. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, we've got success there. So we have success with the boiler music and the boiler photos. Okay, let's keep going. So that's two out of four so far. Okay, so that was quite interesting. Out of those 30 processes, I was successfully able to uninstall 15 of them. The other 15 were coming back with some errors and that could be because they require elevated permissions or root access for us to actually uninstall them. But we can safely say our device is now running 15 less things compared to before. Those 15 things were running in the background, they were consuming memory, they were taking up CPU cycles and just clogging up our device. Following this process means we've now taken them off and our device should perform so much better. So let me do a quick reboot now. So play and select button together. Let's count to five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's just restart our device. And just while you're waiting, guys, if you are enjoying these kind of videos, if you want to see more tutorials for the Fire Stick or the Fire TV Cube or the NVIDIA Shield or all of those generic Android boxes, then please do like this video and also think about subscribing and now also joining the channel memberships if you want to do that. Now, before I started this process, my device, if I just show you, it was sitting on about 153 megs of free memory that we can see here. So let's have a look at that now. Let's bring up the developer tools menu. Let's enable the system X-ray. And wow, guys, so we've gone from about 150 meg of free memory 
to almost 300 megs and that's just something I've never seen on the second generation Fire TV and it just shows that the more things that we can disable in the background the more free memory that we'll have on our device so that's all for this video guys many thanks for watching if you did find it useful then do give it a thumbs up I'm also working on a separate video for the 4k fire stick however on that device I'm trying to see if I can get some kind of helper application which will actually enter in those ADB commands for us so we can start the helper application and that will go ahead and disable all of the things that we want so if you guys are interested in that make sure you are subscribed make sure you like and share this video and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon thanks